Oh dear fellow galactic travelers, today is September 1st, 2024, and I would like to talk about the planet Pluto, which will make a big difference in all of our lives in the next couple of weeks and also years. One of the most important celestial alignments, I believe this year is the final Pluto return in, into Aquarius after a 248 year cycle. No one in our lifetime has experienced Pluto in Aquarius. It is the beginning of what we have been calling for a long time, the age of Aquarius. This is such a grand happening. However, before that, we have some interesting weeks ahead of us. Pluto will test the strength of our spiritual foundations and expose our power and its limitations. We will be confronted with the questions what we control and what controls us. The first time Pluto went into Aquarius was on March 23, 2023. On June 11, the same year, it moved back to Capricorn. During this short period, Pluto already gave us an idea what we are going to expect. Nothing less than the powerful realignment of all humanity. I invite you to go back in your memory and see what that meant exactly in your lives. Second Pluto return into Aquarius happened on 21st January 2024 and lasted until now, September 1st or 2nd, depending on where you are on planet Earth. Pluto is retrograde at the moment and moves back into the last degree of Capricorn for a last and furious short time until it finally arrives in the sign of Aquarius on 19th or 20th November 2024. This new cycle lasts until 2044 and leads to a worldwide revolution in consciousness. It is the beginning of a new era, which will be completely different from everything we have known so far. So, who is Pluto? When we talk about Pluto, we have to ask a question first. Are you ready for spiritual acceleration and intense change? Because Pluto shows us our individual spiritual path and points to our soul's divine will. It represents the source of our soul's transformational power of love. Pluto challenges our courage to surrender. Pluto also represents the cathartic, ecstatic cycle of death and rebirth. What do I want to finally let go? What do I really want to create in my life? In ancient Greek religion and mythology, Pluto or Pluton was the ruler of the Greek underworld. The earlier name for the god was Hades, which became more common as the name of the underworld itself. Pluto represents a more positive concept of the god who presides over the afterlife. Pluto is one of the sonic gods residing beneath the earth, in opposition to the Olympic gods residing above the earth, particularly in the sky. In Greek cosmology, the god received the rule of the underworld in a three-way division of sovereignty over the world with his brother Zeus ruling the sky and his other brother Poseidon sovereign over the sea. Pluton was frequently conflated with Plutus, the go Greek god of wealth, because mineral wealth was found underground and because as a sonic god, Pluto ruled over, uh, over the deep earth that contained the seeds necessary for a bountiful harvest. In the Illusionian mysteries, initiations held every year for the cult of Demeter and Persephone, the most famous of the secret religious rites of ancient Greece, which, by the way, promised the initiated a happy afterlife, Pluto was venerated as a loving husband to Persephone. However, the love story didn't start that well, because there is a dark and violent story of abduction of the goddess Persephone, daughter of Zeus and Demeter. 
Persephone, the asteroid 399 therefore indicates dark love and loss of control. It falls presently in the sign of Sagittarius at 11 degrees 28 minutes and the cosmic energy of future-oriented visionary independence will lead to the loss of control and ultimately to more spiritual insight and truth. It will be interesting to observe how that manifests. The myth of Persephone's abduction, her sojourn in the underworld and her cyclical return to the surface represents um, the embodiment of spring and the personification of vegetation, especially grain crops, which disappear into the earth when sown, sprout from the earth in spring and are harvested when fully grown. Persephone became Pluto's wife and the queen of his realm, and the couple received the souls in the afterlife. In the temples of Pluto and Persephone, visitors sought healing and dream oracles. Both gods of the underworld are agents in the cycle of death and rebirth. While Persephone can be interpreted as the representation of the feminine energy, the giver of material wealth through a bountiful harvest. Pluto, on the other hand, can be seen as the embodiment of masculine energy that bestows us with spiritual wealth. But how does an abduction lead into a balanced relationship, rulership, divine partnership even? Here again, we encounter the archetype of deep transformation and metamorphosis. Persephone, who represents an aspect of one and the same archetype, cyclically questions what we want to let go in order to understand what we want to create in our lives. She holds the mystical wisdom of even lovingly surrendering to the perpetual cycle of death and rebirth. Pluto, on the other hand, represents our soul's divine will and clearly shows us that we are not in control. It is our spiritual path that is leading us forward because our souls hold the dark unconscious power of transformation and growth. And we have to come up with the courage to experience over and over again our lives metamorphosis like Persephone does. Both aspects of the Plutonian force are present within us. And isn't it interesting that Pluto, the most outward X planet in our solar system, holds the most powerful lever in our lives and shows our ability to change towards the higher self when we surrender ego control and devote ourselves to our soul journey. Pluto's and Persephone's myth talks about overcoming the victim consciousness and taking full responsibility in view of our life's destiny. And this takes us back to our experience in mundane astrology. Because Pluto in Capricorn represents top-down control and vertical authority structures like governments, monarchies, religions, corporations, and institutions. It reveals unequal and elitism thinking and doing in the old patriarchal paradigm. Now that Pluto moves into the last degree, the anorectic or crisis degree of 29 degree in Capricorn, we will most probably see some fundamental change within the old structures and power issues around their validity and legitimacy. The old systems will be disintegrating and while they do that, they appear to make more noise because it becomes more evident that they have little substance left. In those 10 or 11 weeks when Pluto pays a very interesting last visit to Capricorn, we will probably witness the revelation and clearing out of anything that no longer serves us and is not for our highest divine good. This is a necessary process that we have to experience because when Pluto finally moves into Aquarius after its 248 year cycle, 
we will have to be ready for change. And this is from an astrological perspective, all that Aquarius represents. If Capricorn is about fixed structures, laws, and rules, Aquarius is about breaking rules, balancing differences, justice, and freedom. Pluto's entry into Aquarius will bring us new ideas, new themes, and new focuses. We will question many previous values, including forms of government, hierarchies in companies, previous bureaucratic processes, international treaties, but also the structure of the world itself. In the very best case, humanity itself transforms into a cooperative community. Maybe we finally understand that wars do not work, that exchange, communication, and solidarity are the better solutions to realize that we can achieve more with joint efforts. But we know that transformation and development can only happen if we look honestly and without blinkers at what is happening right now in our personal lives, but also collectively and globally. It is therefore really important to be conscious and crystal clear where we are headed. Are we still going to make the decisions based on the ego? Or uh, do we decide now more than ever to choose from our intuition, our heart consciousness, which is the highest timeline and honor our discernment? Separate out the choices and go with the highest timeline. This is quite crucial until the end of the year. Because of the noise that the old paradigm will make, while crumbling and disintegrating, we have to have our lives in order, stay focused and balanced, observe, don't absorb. Pluto wants you to uncover your unconscious, to take responsibility and action. And I ask you, are you determined to take this power and live constructively for the good of the whole? Or do you leave to others the power you could take but don't out of convenience? To whom do you give your power? Therefore, it is important to be aware now where your attention goes, in which energy fields your thoughts are active, that you are responsible where you direct your emotions. Do you create with your uh, good with your thoughts? Are you at peace? It is the beginning of a new era, which will be completely different from everything we as humanity, as a collective, have known so far. And we are now able to determine how it plays out. New Earth. Godspeed, my dear fellow galactic travelers, for the coming weeks and months ahead. It will not be boring. <laughs>